Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're going to see how we can export our own custom YOLO model to work on the Raspberry Pi AI hat. So I've got my setup here with my Raspberry Pi 5 with the Halo accelerator on the top, just like the picture, and I've connected a Raspberry Pi high quality camera, and that's what I'm going to be using in this video. In the previous video, I showed how to do the same thing for the AI camera, as well as how to use this GitHub repo I've put together that just combines a bunch of information and some sample scripts to get Ultralytics YOLO models working on both the AI camera and AI hat. In that previous video, I spent a bit of time going over how to actually use the YOLO train script to train your own custom model using the Ultralytics trainer. In this video, I'm going to very briefly touch on it because I want to focus more on how to actually use Halo's toolkit in order to export our model for the actual accelerator on our Raspberry Pi. Now, a big thing I want to mention right at the start is that to actually use the Dataflow compiler from Halo you're going to need Linux, specifically Ubuntu 20 or 22. Unfortunately, Halo does not support any other operating system at this point in time. In fact, the only tool I support with Windows is Halo RT, which is the runtime tool for running the model once it's been compiled. Unfortunately, that is a bit of a hurdle for a lot of users if you don't have experience with Ubuntu, but unfortunately that is the current state. The example we're going to be using in this video is the same as the second example I did in my Raspberry Pi AI camera. You can jump to 20 minutes in that video if you want to see how we can actually train that model. And again, that's just the playing card object detection data set from Kaggle. Again, you'll have to make a Kaggle account if you want to download that. And this is just a toy data set detecting playing card type in suit, and it already has the split with our YAML config file required for our Ultralytics training. Now, unlike with the IMX500 or the AI camera, we're not gonna be using Ultralytics to actually quantize and export our model. We're gonna be using Halo's toolkit. If you're using this repo and the YOLO trainer, all we're gonna be using that for is training our model and exporting it as an Onyx type. You don't need to use this script to train your model. You've already got experience training YOLO models with Ultralytics. I'm sure you know what to do. In order to start the Halo process with the exported tools, you will need to export your model using Ultralytics Exporter, just as the default Onyx format. If you're using the script from this repo and are using just the basic training command, this will by default export your best model as that default Onyx format. You don't need to change the export format to IMX like we did with the AI camera, just keep it as the default format. But very quickly, just to see what that's like with our playing cards example, copy this and paste it to the location where we've cloned our repo. Again, you'll need a GPU to train this model or fine tune it. You just need to set the model name, playing cards. The initial model, again, is the initial pre-trained weights from Ultralytics that we'll be downloading if we haven't already, and then fine tuning from there. The config is that YAML config that came with the data set. So we just need to point to that. In my case, it looks like that. This is just that YAML that comes with the data set here. But once you run this, it will fine tune that YOLO V8 and model 20 epochs on that data set. At the end of that, it will export the best model as that Onyx format. And you can find that under your runs, detect, main cards, weights, and they are best.onyx model. This is what we're gonna be using for the next stage. So there's a lot of different ways to use the Halo compiler. By far, the simplest method is to just use the AI Suite Docker container. It just combines everything from Halo as well as all the requirements into one Docker container that you can just run. In order to get to this software downloads page, you will need to make an account. Once you've made an account, if this still won't show up for you, try clearing your browser cache and reload again. That was something that got me stuck for a long time. If you go into the installation guide for Docker, you'll see this brief quick start guide that we're gonna follow. So as I said, it works with Ubuntu 20 or 22 and you will need Docker install. I'm not gonna go over that here. There are plenty of tutorials online covering that. You'll also need to add your user to the Docker group as well. Now for this next part, if you've already trained a YOLO model with a GPU, you've probably already got this set up. You've got a NVIDIA GPU and the GPU drivers, though you will need to install NVIDIA Docker 2 so that it can access your GPU from inside the Docker container. And on NVIDIA, Another reason why it's good to use the Docker container is that the toolkit actually requires like CUDA 11.8 is a bit old. Having to manage multiple CUDA versions on your system is just a headache. So use the Docker container. If you've used Docker before, the method we're gonna use here as outlined is a bit strange. You will download the Docker container as a zip file from their downloads. So download it from here. And we're actually gonna extract and run that using the script that they've provided. So these steps here, we don't need to run. A Halo Accelerator is not connected to our PC. It is connected to our Raspberry Pi and we'll install the required drivers on that when the time comes. Once you've downloaded that zip, I recommend moving it to a location where you have plenty of file space because we'll be moving some image data there later. Once you've extracted it, 
and run it the first time by running that script. Well, I've got this here on one of my drives. And like I said, if you've used Docker before, this might be a bit of a weird way to run a container. It seems as though they tried to make it as easy as possible to set up and run. And when you run this for the first time, it'll actually create these directories here, which then creates a link between these directories and the Docker container. So with the script, there's no way to actually link any of your drives or directories from your computer. You can edit it here to add the virtual link if you want. But as I said, it creates this directory and does this feature link here. If you've never used Docker before, basically while you're inside the Docker container, you can't access any files or directories or drives from your computer unless you link them. So Halo has tried to make this easy by just creating this shared with Docker folder. For the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it simple and just use this shared with Docker folder. So the first thing we'll need to copy here is our Onyx model. So this is the best.onyx that we got again from our export with Ultralytics. So let's run that script and create our Docker container. I've already run it before, so we can use the dash dash resume option. To just resume the old container we've already created. So if we have a look around here, you can see it's loaded us into the local workspace where it's also copied and installed a bunch of things and has already sourced its virtual environment. One thing that we're gonna use is this Halo Model Zoo, which is already cloned here. So this is from the Halo Model Zoo repo, which contains a collection of pre-trained models and also configuration files for the compilation process, which we're gonna to need to use. So they're in Halo Model Zoo, Halo Model Zoo, config networks. It's these config YAMLs that we're gonna need as a part of our compilation process. You can see they've got them for a whole bunch of different models from a whole bunch of different locations, as well as a whole bunch of YOLO models. There's a whole bunch of different types, including ones that work with our Ultralytics models, including the YOLO V8N, which is what we're gonna use as this example. But unlike the AI camera, you can actually export any of these models. So you could use a YOLO 11N, S, M, different sized models, different types of models as well. So we can actually run much larger models on this AI accelerator. So part of the quantization compilation process that Halo does is actually an optimization step where Halo tries to make sure that the quantized model has the same behavior as the original model. And to do that, we're going to need to provide it with a whole bunch of example images from our data set. Now, these images need to be the same size as the images that the model was trained on. And to create this calibration data set, I've actually got a script here called Halo Calibration Data. Very simply to use the script, we just need to point it at the actual root of our data set and actually provide it a location to save the calibration data. By default, the image size will be 640 by 640. That's the default size for a YOLO model from Ultralytics. And the optimizer likes at least a thousand images to work with. And this calibration step is the reason why Halo requires our GPU for this compilation. So to generate our calibration data, we can just run this command here. We don't need to provide all those parameters. The default for our example will work just fine. But we will need to provide the data directory. So the location of our data. And for me, that's there. And for the target directory, that's the location where it will create this calibration directory with all our images. I'm gonna point that to that shared with Docker directory. Shared with Docker doc, and that's my location. The rest we can use the defaults. And if I run that, it will take the images from that data set, resize and crop them so they're the right size and save them to that calibration data set. Now we don't need the labels for this, just the images because it's not training on the data. It's trying to match the performance between the quantized model and the original model. So it's gonna look at the intermediate layers and compare the outputs there. So if we have our look at our shared with Docker doc, you can see we have our calibration directory here and we have all of our calibration images we're gonna use for the optimization step. So with that done, we can go back to our Halo Docker container and run our compilation step. Now there are many different ways to actually compile and optimize your model. This command here is basically the simplest single line command get it all working and it will do all the intermediate steps for us. So there are a whole bunch of different parameters and options you can tune, but we're not gonna cover that here. If we copy that and go back to our Docker container, we can now start to fill these out. So hardware architecture here, Halo 8. So I've got the 26 top version of the AI hat, which is the Halo 8. You have the 13 top version, that's the Halo 8 L, the lowercase L. The number of classes is the number of output classes. For my playing cards data set, there's 52 for 52 cards. This YAML path is the path to that config YAML that is in the Halo Model Zoo. So from workspace where we are now, that is in Halo Model Zoo. Again, Halo Model Zoo. And then it was in config networks. And you can go back and have a look if you want, but it was YOLO v 8 n So that's the full path from workspace to the correct YAML file for our YOLO v 8 N model. If you use a different model, you'll need to specify the different config file. Calibration path here is the path to our calibration data set. And Halo has linked that directory to 
actually local and then shared with Docker and doc, and then we need to specify our calibration data set. Finally, we need to actually provide it with our model checkpoint. Again, that's in the shared with Docker doc, and then it's our best dot onics. And just like that, we're ready to run. Now this process will take quite some time. It does the quantization, the optimization takes quite a few minutes and then it does the export. So we'll get back when it's done. Hopefully there's no errors. All right, we're back. And as you can see, we have a successful compilation. It took a lot longer than eight seconds. It took about 10 minutes to run the whole thing through. And we get a little report here. And as you can see, we're not using anywhere near the whole of what this Halo 8 accelerator can do. We can load much larger models on this. As it tells us here, it has created that YOLO 8N HEF, which is what we're gonna need to load onto our Raspberry Pi. This HA is an intermediate format that it was using during the compilation process. We don't need to worry about that. All we care about is the F, H-E-F. Now to actually get this out of our Docker container onto our computer, we need to move this to that shared with Docker folder. So we can do that with move yellow eight F. That's gonna be in that local shared with Docker doc. And we can run that. If we run that, we can see that we have our, that YOLO V8N, if you can read that. And this is what we'll need to copy across to our Raspberry Pi through whatever means you have. On my Raspberry Pi, you can see I've copied that across. I've also created this labels TXT, just like the AI camera. We need to create this text file, all the class names in it, just one per line. Again, I've just taken this from the actual data set in the playing card data set, that data YAML, it has all the classes there. We just need to transform this into that labels text file one of these per line. So I've just SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi and you can see I've got my model and my labels here. And I've also cloned two repos. Just like the previous video with the AI camera, we've got the PyCam2 repo. And I've also cloned my Raspberry Pi YOLO repo because I just have a little example here of running the Halo model, which is just a slight modification of the example that Raspberry Pi 2 gives for the Halo and detect here, but we'll get to that in a moment. For the time being, just clone the Raspberry Pi 2 repo. Before we run anything, we'll need to install the Halo drivers or the Halo software onto our Raspberry Pi. So we can just copy this and install that onto our Raspberry Pi. Now, once you've done this and rebooted, we're ready to run the PyCam 2 demo using our trained model. If we go into PyCam 2 examples Halo, you can see we've got our detect script there. To run this with our pre-trained model, we'll need to provide the model's location and the location of the labels here. So model and we'll need to give it the full path for that. I've just got it in my documents there and it'll be the YOLO. Yeah, and let's do the same for the labels. Now, as I discussed in the previous video, these demos don't work over SSH forwarding. So for these examples, I'm gonna remote desktop into my Raspberry Pi. So a remote desktop in, and we just need to run the exact same command, point the script at our model and labels location, and we can now run this. So once we run that, it'll load our model and we get our little preview window. I've actually got my camera upside down here just because of how it's sitting and I've got it pointed at a couple of playing cards here. Because I'm using this over remote desktop and the Wi-Fi connection isn't as great for the Raspberry Pi, it is a bit slow. So this is running at 30 frames a second. I might just include a little clip where I've got the Raspberry Pi actually directly connected to my monitor and you can see how fast it runs. You can see it is doing an okay job at actually detecting the suites here and the confidence is relatively high but got some issues. Just like the AI camera, we can actually change the threshold and drop that down a bit. The default is 0.5, so let's lower that. We just add that on, 0.3, try again. And it's still kind of struggling to get between getting the 10 now, I guess. You can see the confidences for these are quite low. And one thing that I discovered is that the actual demo script is actually squishing and warping our image in order to get it to that 640 by 640 size that is required for the model. If you have a look at that demo script, we're using PyCam 2 in order to get the main and low res stream. We won't go into PyCam 2 into too much detail. Basically the preview that we're seeing is the high resolution stream that the model actually gets the low res stream. And it's configured that low res stream be the size and model width and height. And these are the parameters of the input shape required for our model at 640 by 640. But the actual video stream is 1280 by 960. And to get the low res stream, it's taking the image and resizing and squishing that to make it square. And how PyCam 2 is doing this specifically is a bit of a mystery. You actually save this frame that you get from the capture array for the low res stream. It's actually a bit squished which I find does impact the performance of the actual model because it was trained on images that weren't squished. And while we saw it still does work, I find that you can greatly improve the performance if you instead of squishing it, 
just crop to square. And that's what my halo test example here does. It is a bit tricky in order to make sure that you resize and reposition the bounding box locations so they make sense for the full resolution stream, even though you've taken it from the cropped stream. But I've just modified the extract detections in order to do that so that we can feed in the resized and cropped image to our model so it's not warped and still display the bounding boxes on the full resolution stream. I've also changed the preview type to just QT so this can technically run now over X forwarding over SSH. So the frame rate tends to be very, very low, lower than even just remote desktoping over VNC. And one more thing that I really just can't work out where this has gone wrong in the process, but for some reason, the performance is a lot better. We're using a BGR image. As far as I'm aware, when we train the YOLO model with Ultralytics, we're using RGB images. And when we export, we're using RGB images. But if we actually go back to the demo in PyCam 2 with our trained model, we run just the detect demo again. We notice that we can detect the black cards okay in this example, but it really seems to struggle to detect the red cards. And I've been playing around with not just this model, but other pre-trained models I've, I've created myself. To the best of my knowledge, the model should be getting an RGB image, but the performance is a lot worse than if I give it a BGR image. Here you can see with the PyCam 2 demo where we're giving it an RGB image, it can kind of get it, but it struggles a lot. I go into the demo and change the low res stream from RGB to BGR. We run it again. The performance on the black cards is better and the performance on the red cards is a lot better as well. And again, if you know why this is or where I've gone wrong, please let me know because I'm not really sure why. But in any case, my demo script combines the fix of cropping the image and using the BGR so that our model performance is actually a lot better. So to run it, the command is almost exactly the same. We just now need to use the Halo test example script. And you'll see I've got this box that sort of defines where that crop is. And you can see that the confidence on the black cards is a lot higher and it also works with the red cards and the confidence is a lot higher as well on that. But we can try some other cards as well. I'll just pull out some random ones. Here's a king of diamonds. Go king of diamonds. Another random one. Go ace of diamonds. Here we go. So with that, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or explanations, what's going on with this RGB BGR, please let me know in the comments. And again, thanks for watching.